Hello, welcome to Sergey's Chemistry. Today we are going to look at hydrated copper to sulfate. Try to make it anhydrous and use anhydrous powder to perform a test for the presence of water. Blue crystals of copper to sulfate. And you see in the formula is associated with five molecules of water. Five moles of water per one mole of copper to sulfate. This is the water of crystallization. It's integral part of the crystals. Let's try to drive it out by heat. The water is driven out of the crystals as a vapor. And crystals, blue, becoming white powder. Water was surrounding copper to ions, forming complexes. And these complexes were giving copper to sulfate blue color. Here is the water of crystallization driven out. And what is left behind is anhydrous copper to sulfate. Let's look at it closer. Crystals decomposed. Water exploded them from inside. Let's use this white powder as a test for water. The idea is that only water would return light blue color to it back again. Let's use glycerol as a control. It also has OH groups as water. And like water, it is a colorless liquid. You see no visible change. Looks like it doesn't react with anhydrous copper to sulfate. Let's try water now. It's not necessary that the water is pure. Positive result would be given with any mixture which contains water. The color changes into blue because water again surrounded copper to ions, returning blue color to them. Anhydrous white copper to sulfate on addition of water or a substance containing water is turning light blue. Let's look again at the reaction of addition of water. Water boils as it reaches copper to sulfate because back reaction is very exothermic. It's very hot. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. Bye.